In this video, we will demonstrate the Litmus Predictor, an AI tool to help developers build multilingual NLP models. Litmus, an ongoing project at Microsoft, stands for Linguistically Informed Training and Testing of Multilingual Systems. Developers in industry increasingly use pre-trained multilingual LMs like Ember, XLMR, etc., and fine-tune for different tasks to rapidly scale to many languages. However, high-quality evaluation sets are present in only a few languages, and it's a challenge to measure quality across the spectrum. Further, with limited budget, teams often adopt ad hoc data collection criteria primarily based on the intuition of the developer. The Litmus Predictor tool is designed to assist developers in the model development process. The tool will be released as a web application uh, and we'll quickly walk through its usage. The tool is deployed as a web app and consists of a form where the developer can input his scenario. The developer needs to answer each of the questions in turn to describe his scenario in detail. The first question we ask is, what is the pre-trained model you are using for your task? Currently, there are two options configured here, XLMR and Embert, though in the future, we can add other models as well. The next question is, what is the nature of your task? And here we have three options configured. We have two kinds of tasks, sequence tracking and classification on public data sets like UDPOS, WikiNN, and XNLI. If the nature of the task is different from these, the developer can choose the custom option, and we'll get to that in a minute. Let's assume that the developer is interested in the UDPOS model at this moment. At any point, if the developer is confused, they can choose to hover over the eye icon and see a description of what the input entails. The next input is the fine-tuning configurations. Let's try to add a fine-tuning configuration here. Each fine-tuning configuration basically consists of the set of pivot languages that they are fine-tuning the pre-trained model on and the amount of data say, uh, and the amount of fine-tuning data in each of the pivot languages. So let's add a few rows here. On clicking add, the pivot and the amount of data in that pivot is basically added to the current configuration. On clicking save, this is added as a config row here. We can add more configurations here in order to simulate performance in all the configurations and compare the performance across them. Let's add a few more. As we, as we can see, now we have three configurations here. Each configuration is specified by the set of pivots that are used for fine tuning and the amount of data size, uh, amount of fine tuning data in each of the pivots. At any point, if the developer feels like removing one of the configs, they can do so via the cross icon here. The next input is the set of target languages. These are the languages that the model will be finally used for inferencing on. So in this scenario, let's have So we have configured a set of six languages here. And we can at this point, we have configured all the basic inputs that are required for simulating the uh, performance in the UDPOS task on a XLMR pre-trained model when fine tuning on these three configs. Let's go ahead and click submit. As you can see, we now have two graphs over here, which, uh, which describe the simulated performance. Let's go over them in turn. The first thing that we say is, uh, we declare what is the error in our prediction, in our predictor model. So we have pre-trained a model on UDPOS and on our data set, we see a mean absolute error of about 0.4%. The next thing is this graph here which details the predicted performance in the desired target languages. So basically these six languages that we chose here, we report this graph on the best configuration among the multiple that the developer has provided. So here it's saying that the best configuration out of the three is the second one. And the graph basically shows the performance for when fine tuned on the second configuration. The bars in green denote performance better than the average. The bars in red denote performance worse than the average and the average is marked here. So in the current scenario, we see an average performance of 83.3% across the set of six target languages. Four of the languages perform better than the average and two worse than the average. For detailed results, we can click the download all button to basically get a JSON format file, which has all these details. The second graph shows a heat map. Uh, the heat map denotes the performance in each target language across the different configurations. This allows us to compare the performance across uh, different targets. So for example, we can see that when we had Japanese in the second configuration, the performance was better as compared to the other configurations, which did not have Japanese. We can also infer that for a few languages like English, French, and German, the model seems to do well, regardless of the configuration. Till now, we have discussed the first aspect of the tool, that is to predict task performance for a given fine tuning configuration without having to actually do the fine tuning. Crucially, this allows us to predict performance even in targets where we have no labeled test sets. This is of great importance when we are targeting less widely spoken languages for which creating test sets itself is challenging.
Next, we will move to the second aspect of the tool, that is to find data collection strategies to improve the overall task performance, especially in languages that fall behind the average. To generate a data collection plan, the developer needs to check this box. This brings up a few additional fields that need to be specified. For generating the plan, the tool performs a search over the space of possible data augmentations in different languages. It uses the train predictor from the previous step to compare different augmentations and choose the better ones. The search process itself can be customized with different budget, objective, and performance constraints. First, we configure the budget parameters. Budget here refers to the number of additional training examples that we can collect across all the fine tuning languages or pivots. The first field here allows the developer to specify the languages in which it is possible for them to collect more training samples. By default, it is configured as a set of target languages, but can be customized based on the developer situation. In, in our case, we chose six target languages and those are pre-populated in this field. The next field asks for the actual budget itself. That is the total number of additional instances that can be labeled across the selected targets. By default, it is configured to 10,000. In our case, let's go ahead with 8,000. The third field asks for language specific budgets. In some situations, the developer may not be able to gather more than a certain threshold of data in some languages. This is often the case for less widely spoken languages. In such scenarios, we can limit the search to remain within these thresholds. For the current scenario, let's set the limit for Tamil and Japanese to 5,000 each. The last input, we can choose the baseline configuration over which we want the data collection plan. In our case, we have specified three fine tuning configurations and by default, the tool will use the best of the three as the baseline model for improvement. Alternatively, the developer can explicitly choose from among the specified fine tuning configurations. Once these fields are specified, uh, just save the changes. The next set of fields for customizing the search are the objective function parameters. It allows us to specify which objective we want to maximize. Currently, there are two different objectives specified. One is the weighted average performance across the targets, and the second is the minimum performance across the chosen targets. In case of weighted average, optionally, we can specify the target weights in the second field here. In case this is left blank, empty, it just becomes a simple unweighted average. For now, let's go ahead with unweighted average. In the last set of fields, allow us to uh, configure the performance constraints. There are two constraints that are possible. The first field allows us to constrain candidates to have a certain minimum performance, minimum average performance across all the targets. Let's put this as 0.7 for now. The second field allows us to place the same constraint, but in a language specific manner. Let's constrain the search to guarantee at least 0.8 or 80% performance in English, French, and German. This concludes the specification for the data collection parameters, and we can now submit the same. This time, we can see a third graph at the bottom, which details the generated data collection plan. The plan is presented in the form of a pie chart, showing the percentage allocation of the budget to the different augmentable languages. In this case, the tool reports that 50% of the budget, that is 4,000 samples, should be collected in Chinese, and 25% of the samples, or 2,000 samples, should be collected in Japanese, and so on. In some cases, the tool may report some unused budget in case it was not able to beneficially allocate the same among the given pivots. We have discussed the two aspects of the tool and have used pre-trained models on the public data sets till now. We will now explore the custom task option to train new predictors. To do so, we first choose the custom option over here. This brings up an additional field which allows us to upload, the, uh, upload a file with our custom training observations. So let's have a look at a sample file. The file is a CSV document containing four columns as described over here. The first column consists of a set of pivot languages and the second column consists of the amount of fine tuning data in each of these pivot languages. The third column specifies the target language and the fourth column specifies the predicted, uh, the actual performance in the target language. In this file, we have collected about a hundred uh, training observations and we will use these to train a new predictor model. We can now upload the custom file. For the example, we can let the remaining fields remain the same and we can submit. This takes slightly longer as a new predictor is being trained first. As we can see, uh, the, this time the results are reported using the new predictor trained from our custom observations. To conclude, we believe that our tool addresses key pain points in the model development lifecycle and will prove valuable to teams in the industry. We plan to bring further improvements to the tool based on ongoing feedback. This website will be publicly available and the code will also be open sourced. Thank you.